the Tommy from the Run Testers with a second run review of the Under Armour Hover Sonic 5 running shoe. Let's take a look. The Under Armour Hover Sonic 5 costs £105 or $110. It weighs in at 280 grams or 9.9 .9 ounces for men in a size 8 and the drop is 8 millimeters. The Under Armour Hover Sonic 5 is a daily running shoe that's built for comfort and versatility. The UA Hover midsole is a balanced foam that delivers plenty of cushioning for general running with an ample level of propulsion for picking up the pace. The upper offers a soft and relaxed fit with strategically placed padding for comfort without making it feel bulky. It also has a good level of breathability and gives a nice secure fit while still feeling roomy. There's also an external TPU heel wrap to add structure and support, a molded EVA sock liner for extra comfort, and carbon rubber over the heel and toe sections for added grip and durability. The shoe also features Under Armour's tracking technology, which works alongside the MapMy Run app to give running metrics without the need for a wearable device. So the fit for me in the Hover Sonic 5 is true to size. It's a nicely roomy shoe. There's a lot of space in the forefoot so you can wiggle your toes and stuff like that. And the upper is quite flexible. So um, it's a very comfortable shoe. I definitely go true to size in the Hover Sonic 5. So I've just been to do a 12K run in the Sonic 5 and uh, I did a, about my base pace so my easy pace that is about four minutes 50 kilometers uh, and it's just been over uh, roads and a little bit of hills and stuff like that uh, I didn't know a lot about the Sonic series before so I've come into this shoe quite fresh I, I didn't really know what to expect from it uh, from taking it out of the box it seems to be a very traditional style shoe the midsole foam isn't particularly soft or squishy uh, the upper is a very traditional Fit. Um, it's a very traditional looking shoe basically. It looks a little bit like a tennis shoe. It's a nice looking shoe. Uh, I really like the look of the shoe, um, but it's a very traditional style shoe. There's nothing that really stood out to me when I started looking at the shoe straight out of the box. So what I found is uh, I've actually done two runs in this shoe so far. I did a 10k run in it about three weeks ago, but I, I got snowed in other shoes and uh, I didn't have time to do a review and I just picked it up again. So this is a second run review of the shoe. The experience I've had over both runs is, is pretty similar. I found that run to be perfectly enjoyable. I very much enjoyed that run. I, I, I The shoes did a good job. Um, I definitely didn't have any issues with them at all on that run. They felt very comfortable. They really felt um, surprisingly light as well. I don't necessarily, when you take them out of the box and hold them, feel that light, but they do feel quite light to run in, which is a nice surprise, really, because I was expecting them to feel a little bit clunky and a little bit heavy for a shoe, which is designed and looks the way they do. That midsole is, well, there's not really much to say about it, really. It's not a particularly soft midsole. It's not a particularly firm midsole. Nothing really stands out when I was running in this shoe in terms of the, the midsole experience. But that's actually a good thing. I didn't think about the shoe at all when I was running it. And I, to be honest, I didn't really want to go out for a run today uh, because I did a 10K race yesterday. So today I wasn't really in the mood for running. So I, I did expect to feel a bit sluggish, to really wanted to wear a shoe that was really soft and would, would really limit the um, impact of the run. But these did a fine job. Um, I had no issues at all. Didn't think about the shoe once really when I was running in it. So that's a big thumbs up from me on that. Uh, and they also, as I say, feel quite lightweight. So I definitely felt that I could go faster on that run. They had a lot more in it. I did pick up the pace on a few of the uh, kilometers just to see how it felt, and it felt very good. I wouldn't say it's a speed shoe by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's a relatively versatile shoe for general daily running. Uh, other than that, nothing really stood out that much to me with the shoe. It's just a very solid, reliable daily shoe that I would probably use for a variety of runs really. Um, I probably wouldn't go all the way down to easy day runs or long runs. I don't think the midsole foam has got enough in it to deliver a nice experience for long runs or really slow, comfortable runs. But for those daily runs where you just want to pick up a shoe and you want to go out for a run and you need something that's just going to do the job, uh, I think I think it's uh, fine, it's, it's good, stable, and just a stable, sturdy workhorse daily trainer that, that seems to do the job. I'd also say that I really quite like the upper as well. It's it's not heavily padded. It's got enough padding around it to feel comfortable, um, but presumably there's not too much to keep the weight down. 
um, but it's a very comfortable upper. It feels, even when you've got it sort of securely strapped down, it, it feels quite relaxed and comfortable. It's a very nice shoe that holds the foot in place comfortably without feeling too restricted. So overall, very enjoyable first run, second run. Okay, so my early verdict on the UA Hover Sonic 5 is solid shoe. I, I think it's a nice option for daily trailing. I don't think it excels in any area. I don't think there's anything that really stands out about the shoe. Um, but equally, there's nothing that I dislike about the shoe either. I think it's fine. I think if you're uh, a, if you're somebody looking for a daily trainer and you just want something that does the job and ticks a lot of boxes, I think it will be more than in, more than fine. The price of the shoe is, uh, the RIP of the shoe is about £105, which I would say is pretty good price for this shoe. I'd probably say there are other options that I would go for over that. The Rincon 3 would maybe be a better option. It's similarly um, light-ish. It's got a, a nice breathable upper like this, this shoe, but I think that shoe's midsole is just a little bit bouncier, a little bit softer, and a little bit more enjoyable. I also think I could run faster in that shoe. I've raced in the, the, the Rincon one a few times. I think it's a nice shoe for racing. I don't think this would be. Although I'd probably go up to maybe maximum lighter tempo sessions with this. I probably, I wouldn't go any further than with this shoe than, than that. So for 105 pounds, it's not a bad shoe, but on the website at the moment on Under Armour, it's actually about 75 pounds, which I think is a very good price for this shoe. It's a extremely good value shoe at that price for daily training. I think if you were somebody that just wanted to pick up one pair of shoes, you'd maybe just started running and you just wanted a solid pair of shoes that you could go out and do 5Ks with, do part runs with. I think it's a good option for that. The other big feature of this shoe, and I haven't spoken about it in the run test, is that it also includes the um, tracking software that sits within the shoe. So that links to uh, Under Armour's Map My Run app, and you can actually track various metrics like cadence and things from your run directly from the shoe. So you don't need to have a running watch to pick up a, a number of metrics, which is probably a bonus if you're somebody who doesn't have a running watch, doesn't want to run with their phone, but still wants to get some stats off of their run. So you get that nice little bonus from it. It's not something that I use. I've got a Garmin, so I, I, I don't even look at my um, map my run features, but for somebody who doesn't have a Garmin or doesn't have a watch or anything like that, doesn't want to run with a watch or a phone, that might be a nice option as well. So for 75 pounds, there's quite a lot in this shoe, which makes it a pretty good um, value option if you just want one solid trainer to keep you going, which doesn't do anything too amazing. So yeah, um, enjoyed that run and uh, I will report back with a full review when I eventually get round to doing it. That's it from me. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. And don't forget, we've also got our monthly podcast, which is out at the end of each month. If you go in the caption below, you can find the link where you can listen to that at all the podcast providers I can think of. There's probably some more that I haven't got it on. And you could also leave us a little review and a rating on Apple Podcasts if you like the podcast. That's it from me. Catch you later.